Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back everyone. I had a great time on my shoot, great time in Mississippi, happy to be home and I feel super behind with everything, especially what's been going on in the world of space because a lot happened in like mid-September. And one of the many things that happened while I was gone is that they finally set a launch date for the Europa Clipper. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, about six months ago, I made a video about this amazing mission that's headed towards Jupiter's ocean-covered moon, Europa. I'll post a link to that video down below, but the gist is that Jupiter's ice-encased moon, Europa, has a lot of water underneath its icy surface. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. It has more than twice the water of all of Earth's oceans combined. And we're like 71% ocean, right? So that is a lot of water. And we know from our own oceans that where there tends to be a lot of water, there tends to be a lot of life. Now, I'm sure some of you might be saying, okay, so like maybe there's some tiny alien microbes underneath this frozen over ocean millions and millions of miles away. So what? What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is this. We all know that life is abundant on Earth, but we haven't yet found it anywhere else in the universe, like anywhere else. So this whole mission goes to the very core of, are we it? Is it just us? Or does life exist in any other form within our own solar system? And if so, how do we search for life beyond our home planet? Scientists say that we should look for three key ingredients that make life possible. Liquid water, chemistry, and energy. Also, life takes time to develop. So we should look for life on worlds where sufficient time has passed to get life started. Jupiter's icy moon Europa may have these essential ingredients, and it's just as old as Earth. So NASA is sending the Europa Clipper spacecraft to conduct a detailed exploration of Europa and investigate whether the icy moon with its subsurface ocean has the capability to support life. Understanding Europa's habitability will help scientists better understand the potential for finding life beyond our planet and potentially guide us in our search. And this search is the search, right? The what else is out there search, the very heart of space exploration. Because I think for many to better understand that is to better understand ourselves. So NASA announced on September 9th that the launch window will open on October 10th, 2024. Though the launch window is technically open until November 6th. The decision on whether or not to launch has actually been up in the air for the last several months, as NASA had recently found out that the transistors on the spacecraft may not be as radiation hardened as they thought. And this is pretty critical because the Europa Clipper is going to travel, get ready for it, 1.8 billion miles to get to Europa. Jupiter is surrounded by a gigantic magnetic field, 20,000 times stronger than Earth's. As the field spins, it captures and accelerates charged particles, creating radiation that can really damage a spacecraft. Mission engineers designed a spacecraft vault to shield sensitive electronics from radiation, and they plotted orbits that will limit the time Europa Clipper spends in most radiation-heavy areas around Jupiter. But recent tests have demonstrated that the transistors are now fine. They think. So the mission will proceed as planned. NASA Science Mission Directorate head Nikki Fox and JPL Director Lori Leshen said at a recent press conference that Clipper unequivocally passed the review. And Fox added that she can't wait for the mission to launch next month and see all of the incredible and unprecedented science that the mission will produce. Exactly when it will launch will depend on weather and coordinating other launches at the Kennedy Space Center. And the Europa Clipper will launch on SpaceX's 
Russia's Falcon Heavy rocket. JPL and NASA officials briefed the public on September 17th about what their expectations and preparations are for the launch. They also went over what they hope to learn after the spacecraft reaches Jupiter in 2030 and does 49 flybys of Europa. On each orbit, the spacecraft will spend less than a day in Jupiter's dangerous radiation zone near Europa before zipping back out. Two to three weeks later, it will repeat the process with another flyby and on and on and on and on until we hit 49, apparently. The spacecraft will come as close as 16 miles or 25 kilometers from Europa's surface, studying it with a variety of instruments. One is radar that they hope will reveal the depth of the crust before reaching the liquid ocean underneath. Other instruments will study chemicals on the surface, some of which may have been deposited by geysers that shoot up from the ocean through the cracks in the surface. And it's important to note that Europa Clipper is searching for signs of habitability, whether or not an environment exists that can support life, not the life itself. That's probably going to be a different mission. And with its antennas and solar arrays fully deployed, Europa Clipper is the largest spacecraft that NASA has ever developed for a planetary mission. It extends 100 feet from one end to the other and about 58 feet across. That's bigger than a basketball court, thanks in large part to the solar arrays, which need to be huge so they can collect enough sunlight while near Jupiter to power the instruments, electronics, and other subsystems. And one extra little bit of adorableness, as part of a mission campaign called Message in a Bottle, the Europa Clipper is carrying a poem written by U.S. Poet Laureate Ada Lamon, written just for this mission. It was co-signed by millions of people from basically every country in the world. All of their names have been stenciled onto a microchip that has then been attached to a metal plate which seals the spacecraft's electronic vault. The plate also features waveforms of people saying the word water in over a hundred languages. This campaign is a special collaboration uniting art and and science by NASA, the U.S. Poet Laureate, and the Library of Congress. And you guys know I am all about that weird blend of art and science. If you're interested in actually hearing the poem, I will post an audio link in the description below. I have to admit, I actually really liked it. Space poems. Who knew? So yes, now that I am back, I will definitely keep an eye out for the actual launch date of Europa Clipper. Because as we all know, 2024 has been all about pushing launch dates return dates, all the dates. It's going to be kind of a strange launch because it's an unmanned mission. And then once it goes, it'll be like, bye, see you in six years. <laughs> but I think it's a really fascinating mission and I'm actually really pleased that they're doing it. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited by this mission? Do you think that there's anything to be discovered on Europa? Or is it just billions and billions of gallons of empty ocean water. Seems hard to believe, like a super big missed opportunity for nature, but maybe? But I suppose one way or the other, at some point, we're gonna find out. Thank you so much for watching. It's nice to be back. And as always, I will see you in the next video.